What's happening, everybody? It is time for another Draw Reveal show, The Rampage, through August. That's right. A tournament every weekend heads to Utah for the Pickler Utah Open. Let's take a look at the draws and the storylines. We'll start with women's singles and Caitlin Christian. Oh, so close again. Lost in the final in Tennessee to the red-hot Brooke Buckner. So she's looking to take that one more step, has been to a couple finals, doesn't have a gold medal in 2024. Let's take a look at the draw. And the big story here in women's singles is who's not playing. Brooke Buckner not playing. Anna Lee Waters not playing. Catherine Parento not playing. So big opportunity here. And that makes the number one seed, Leah Jansen. Can she live up to it? We'll find out. On her side of the draw, Yuta Castillo always lurking as a terrific singles player. Salome Davidze back-to-back tournaments. She's right there as the three seed. And then I love intriguing early round matchups. Kate Fahey, who got all the way to the final in KC and just came up short against Brooke Buckner, is the 14. And she'll play Jesse Irvin, who jumps into singles every once in a while, trying to get ready for Major League Pickleball and get those reps. Over here, you've got Mary Brasha back, so it's great to have the Brashas back in the mix. She's the two seed, and there's Paris Todd. We knew those double-digit seeds would be going away. She is the five seed, and she is very good. As the 11 seed, congratulations to Zoe Wong. Got her first PPA medal last week in singles in Bristol. Good for her. She is the 11 seed, and then there's Caitlin Christian, the four seed. So. A week of opportunity here, especially in women's singles. Now let's look at the dudes. And this year, singles has always started with Fed Staxrud. However, he keeps having a problem with Ben Johns in the finals, just hasn't been able to beat him. He did in 2023 in a final, but not this year. But his points are tremendous, and he has a huge lead over the field. Let's take a look at the draw. There's Fed at the top. And interestingly enough, if Noe Cliff can win his first round matchup, back to back weeks that Noe would run into Fed stacks route. These are completely random. Sometimes those things happen. So they had a very tough match last week could happen again. Down here as the five seed is Chris Hayworth. Everyone knows he's terrific in singles. Now he has a five by his name. He has a win this year, and you just don't want to play that dude. Moves terrific. The two on the run cracks those serves and passing shots. Chris Hayworth is special. Now over here, you will not see Ben Johns as the two seed. He is not in this tournament either, so opportunities there. He got back into the winner's circle in Bristol, Tennessee last week in singles. So Connor Garnett, who won the week before, is back. He took Tennessee off. And that's what these players are going to have to do, manage their bodies, manage their schedule. It's hard to play back to back to back weeks. So Connor Garnett is back. And as I said, I love these little early round intriguing matchups. Here's one for me. We got the Share Bear as the 22 playing the up and coming lefty, Augie Gah. Look out for that one. That's going to be a lot of fun. Augie is the 43. Tyson McGuffin, he's just always there. He's always lurking. He's always on the podium. Unbelievable. He's the three seed. Jack Sock is the six seed down here. And then there is quite a matchup here again in the first round. Michael Lloyd will talk about what he did in doubles a little later in the show. And Grayson Golden, the 34. Golden had a terrific run last week in Tennessee. And one of his upsets was over Jack Sock. So he could get a chance to do it again. We'll see if he gets that far. And I know Jack Sock would love some revenge out in Utah. So now let's look at mixed doubles. And there's Jack. Jack has been playing some mixed with his New York Hustlers partner, Leah Jansen. Well, there's two ladies on that team, so why not jump in with Jackie Kawamoto, terrific player. So we'll see how these two Hustler teammates do. Let's take a look at the draw. As I mentioned, no Ben or Anna Lee this week. So the top seed is James Ignatowicz and Anna Bright. We'll see if they can live up to that billing and get another title together. Leia Jansen playing with Big H. Hayden Patrick Quinn, they're always a problem. And then down at the bottom, 
Team Proton, Andre Diascu, and Megan Dazan. Megan's going to have a lot of fans behind her as the 11 seed. So can they do a big run here and get to a quarter or a semi? They certainly have the talent to do so. So that's that seed. On the left, J-Dub and Georgia Johnson looking to get back to Sunday. Can they do it in Utah? We'll find out. And here we have how hard it is to get a great seed in mixed doubles on the Carvana PPA Tour. Paris Todd and Hunter Johnson, who made a semi a couple weeks ago, are the number 20 seed. They don't have tons of points. They're racking them up right now, just like Paris has improved her single seed. This one will keep getting better. But that's a nightmare for Augie Ga and Etta Wright. They're a terrific team, and they're going to have their hands full with their first match in mixed. Down below, there's where Jack and Jackie are. That's going to be fun to say. They're the 14th seed. And then look who's back, Riley Newman, and how smart of him. Jump in there with one of the Utah ladies. Callie Smith, they're the seventh seed. How is that going to work out? We will find out. So mixed doubles, always a lot of fun, but without Ben and AL in there, everyone's got a shot at grabbing a gold medal this week. Now, on to women's doubles, and Georgia Johnson and Mari Humberg have just been so much fun to watch. Their styles mesh so well. The smile that's always there on Mari's face as she is just knifing those backhands. We love watching this duo play, and Georgia just had a birthday last week. Can she let that celebration continue into Utah? We'll see. Let's look at the draw. So without AL and CP in here, it's the girlies, Anna Bright and Rachel Rohrabacher, who take the number one seed, and they were not happy with what took place in the final in Bristol. They got beat handily in three straight games by Anna Lee and Catherine. They're going to look to rebound and take a title of their own here. The 12 versus 20 is just a fun matchup. You've got Zoe Wong, Yudit Castillo. They are partners together. They are MLP partners as well on the Las Vegas Night Owls, so a lot of familiarity there. They're going to play Alex Trung, so you've got a Utah lady there, along with Kate Fahey. So that's just a lot of fun, a lot of firepower in that early round match. Down below, Vivian David and Paris Todd, Orlando Squeeze teammates. And then the Brashes that I mentioned are back. There they are as the 10 seed. They haven't had that big breakthrough event this year. Could Utah be the place for them? We shall see. On this side, the Utah ladies who they love, and they've won a title in Utah, but that was down in St. George. So can they make it happen in Salt Lake City? Etta Wright and Megan Dazan would love to do so. Down here at the bottom is the number nine seed that I just talked about. I love this team. Georgia and Mari have so much talent, and there's so much positivity and connectivity between these two. I know they're the nine seed, but they could win this whole thing. We'll see how Utah treats them. Now, let's look at the men's doubles, and this team has been terrific all year. When they've played together, big results have followed. You've got the veteran presence of Andre Diascu, who's just a terrific all-around player. Just that nice, calming influence for Gabe Tardio, who has been changing the world. He's like, I'm over here on the right, and I'm wrecking everybody, and people are taking notice. They are freezing him out of matches sometimes. Yeah, the right side player. So kudos to Gabe. We'll see if he and Andre can make a run out in Utah. Let's take a look at the draw. Top seeds are J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier. They'd made six finals in a row until they were knocked out early in Bristol, Tennessee. They want to get back to Sunday. We'll see if they can. Pablo Tejas and Hayden Patrickwin are a terrific team. They complement each other so very well. They could have a very intriguing quarterfinal if those two teams can get there, but a lot of work has to be done to get that far. Down here at the bottom, there's where the big props come. Todd Fote and Michael Lloyd, and then there is the eight seed. Diascu and Tardio just lurking there. They could win this whole thing. We shall see. Over here on the left, yeah, that says C. John. So Colin Johns is playing this week, but Ben is not. The sixth seed is very dangerous. Augie Ga and Federico Staxrud, watch out for those two. They are terrific righty lefty. Fed has been playing terrific men's doubles this year, has a couple titles. We'll see if he can get another one. And as I mentioned, Riley Newman back 
He's with Brandon French. These two are going to be a lot of fun to watch. The chirping will be at an all-time high. I can't wait to see how they do. And then Jimmy Ignatowicz and Matt Wright played a lot at the beginning of the year, then sort of broke it off, but they're back together for at least this one. They've got so much talent, it just never worked. Maybe that time apart will bring them together for some great results. So wide open field here as well. The top seeds want to return to Sunday. We'll see if they're able to do it. So let's look at the overall storylines for this event. And as I have shown you throughout these draws, opportunity is knocking with some of the top players sitting this one out. This is when you can make a big name for yourself because when you can say Carvana PPA Tour champion on your resume, that's huge. We'll see if somebody comes from a double digit seed and wins something. Next up, home court advantage. Here's a couple of the Utah ladies I talked about earlier. Etta Wright and Megan Design are just terrific together, and now they're going to have that boisterous Utah crowd behind them, and all the Utah players will have that. That can be the difference in a really tight match. Next, getting salty. What do I mean by that? We're going to play in the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City. That's so much fun, and it's indoors, so we will not have to worry about the elements like we did last week with the rain challenges in Bristol. That also means you got to get adjusted to the sight lines. There's not going to be the wind, but the ball usually plays a little faster in there. So folks are going to have to get in there, get some practice reps, and see how they can play their best inside in the Salt Palace. Hello, Newman. As I said, he's back. He's got Callie Smith. That could go really well. And Brandon French and... Mr. Newman actually won an event. We had a smaller event in Frisco, Texas, up the road here in Dallas. So they actually have a championship together. Could they do it again? We'll find out. And finally, opening act. What do I mean by that? This is one of the opens on tour this year. That means 1,000 points available for the winners. It also means we will play singles on Thursday, mixed doubles on Friday, and men's and women's doubles on Saturday and wrap that thing up on Championship Sunday and give out some gold medals. Where can you watch this? This week, we've got you covered on Pickleball TV. Sunday's got a big chunk of Tennis Channel on there. I'm actually going to sit this one out as well, so you're going to have great coverage from our great commentary team. But this is going to be a lot of fun with the opportunities galore for the players who are heading to Utah. So thanks so much for watching the Draw Reveal Show. Until next time, I'm Dave Fleming. Peace.